My name's Marty and welcome to this video series on building your own EXP guitar kit from Guitar Kit World. In the following video, I'm going to show you how I put together this guitar. I'm going to cover all aspects of the build, including finishing, installing hardware, connecting up the electronics, and then doing a final setup. So if you've never built a kit guitar before, or don't have specialist tools, don't worry, I'm not a luthier, I'm not even all that particularly handy myself. But just about anyone can put together a guitar like this which is basic tools and a little bit of patience. So the guitar we're gonna be working on today is an EXP model. We've got an alder body, maple neck and fretboard, neck and bridge humbuckers, two volume and one tone, and a tunematic style bridge. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna take the video back to the very start of the build. We're gonna start by taking the guitar, popping it up on the bench and inspecting it for any scratches or marks. So we've got the guitar up on the bench now, and I'm just uh, picking up the body and having a close look for any, for any deep scratches mostly. We really want to address those early on. Prep is really important with regard to how successful your finish will be. We're not really looking for glue or any issues like that. This guitar doesn't have binding or a veneer on top, so really shouldn't have any issues other than scratches. So if you do notice any scratches, be sure to deal with them with a 120 or 180 grit sandpaper and then work your way up to about a 320. I'm just using 320 grit. Now because the headstock is perfectly flat, I'm using a hardwood block and that way the sandpaper won't conform to any bumps. So I'm just sanding with the grain, just lightly. I need to press too hard. So basically whenever you're um, using a lighter grade of paper, you're not really trying to remove any scratches anymore. You're just removing the scratches left from the heavier gauge of, or heavier uh, grit paper you used previously. So before we permanently set the neck, we want to do a dry fit of the neck. The reason we do this is to check the scale length of the guitar check the neck angle and also check the neck alignment. So before we insert our neck, it's important that we take a lot of care as we're pushing the neck into the neck cavity. The reason for this is, look at the edges of the neck cavity here. You realize on one side, it's really quite thin and very easily chipped. So to avoid that, what we really want to do is insert the heel in first like so, and then push down. This is a good tight fitting neck. Now once that's in place, we want to check the scale length. Now for those who don't know what scale length is, it's essentially the, the length of the vibrating string. So the string suspended by the bridge, or through from the bridge to the nut. And on this style of guitar, it should be 628 mil or 24.75 inches. I've already pre-checked this one, but you should check that and just make sure it's right. If it's out by a couple of mil, don't be too concerned. The, the saddles are able to be adjusted too. Okay, so the next thing to do is check the neck alignment. Now, you really only need to do that if, if there's some play in the neck itself. This neck's in really quite tight, so I'm comfortable that the alignment will be correct. But if it was a loose fitting neck, what you would want to do is measure and make a mark halfway across the neck there and measure between the two pre-drilled holes for the bridge. Draw a line, just make sure that's aligned. Now the next thing to do is check the neck angle. Now you can insert the bushings and the posts for the bridge if you like, but what I like to do is just let the bridge just sit like so. Make sure that the neck's incorrectly. And taking a straight edge, just make sure that that's just sitting above which it is in this case, so we can move on. Okay, now we've dry fit the neck, or confidently I should say, permanently set the neck. Just clear out the neck cavity. Sometimes there'll be sawdust or even polystyrofoam from the box the guitar came in. Just clean that all out. Make sure the back's clean as well. We use some PVA, or this is Aquadia, but a similar product. What we're really just trying to do is apply enough glue to the bottom of the neck cavity to have a nice even coating. And the other thing I like to do is a bit of glue on the heel of the neck as well. Just make sure that's on nice and evenly. Once that's in place, just as we dry fit the neck before, insert the heel first. Make sure that's nice and all the way into the cavity. And then we'll need to clamp the guitar. What I've got here is Fine buffing oil, it's a Beast Watson product. It's just a mixture of oils and waxes. Now what I'd first do is shake that up. I'll just see a lot. And next thing I'd just quickly do as well is just mask off that neck. Just take a, uh, a clean rag obviously, put some on the rag and just begin to apply. Just really work it into the grain. Now 
as you can see, we've got a nice, uh, nice golden sort of natural look to this guitar, which I think will look really good once there's some chrome hardware on there. So what I'll do next, leave it about 20 minutes till it's tacky, then I'll just come along and wipe off any excess, and then we'll look at doing the sides and the back. about 15 minutes so what I'm going to do now is just come along clean rag and just wipe away any excess. Once that's done I'll leave this guitar to dry for about five hours I'd say and then come along and see if we need a second coat which I'm thinking we will. Okay, so I've got the EXP body up on the bench now for the final coat. So first thing I want to do is shake up this uh, oil. Now I've got a clean rag here. What I suggest doing is folding the edges in so you don't have any of the frayed areas. Let's fold into a nice workable uh, square like that. And I've also wiped down the guitar, obviously. You don't want any dust or any debris on the surface when you're applying an oil finish like this. Hopefully that's, um, that's in view. I just want to make sure that that's uh, tied up against the timber. Also mask up those tuning peg holes and the truss rod. It's really important to just make sure no gunk gets inside that truss rod and affects the, um, the functionality of the truss rod. So I'll do that off camera. Um, next step from here, we'll be adding a prime coat, probably two prime coats, and then we'll follow that up with some solid black. I'm gonna do this inside. I normally spray outside, but um, it's a pretty windy day. There's a fair bit of dust flying around, and this is a relatively small spray job. So I've just got it sitting in a box to catch any overspray. I'm using an acrylic enamel primer. This is um, Rust-Oleum 2X. So once you hear the rattle of the ball, you just generally shake it up for a minute. I've already shook this up for about half that off camera, so I'll just follow up quickly. When we're spraying primer, important just to have the can on an angle and just work in strips. So as I said, it's a relatively small job, but we'll just spray from the top, work our way down, and each run will overlap by about 50%. As I said, I'll be doing two coats, so it doesn't matter if the first coat doesn't get full coverage, I'll be following that up, and the second coat will adhere nicely to the first coat. Um, now, it's also important that you do your coats while the, while the previous coat is still a little tacky, so it adheres nicely. So what I'll be doing is doing one coat, waiting about five to 10 minutes, and following that up with the second coat. And just same as the first coat. So we're just doing long runs, overlapping by about 50%. Just work my way across. And I generally leave the first coat probably at that and then follow up with um, a second and third heavier coat and should get good coverage that way. What I'd recommend from here is seeing that flat but using a, staying at about a 400 grit paper and you know not really needing anything lower than that. Um, <clears throat> it's a nice flat surface to sand on. So what we're really trying to do is just just sand it dead level. Keep that sanding paper nice and tight on the sanding block. Definitely use the sanding block. So as I'm sanding, I'm going to keep checking my work. If I hold the if I hold the headstock up to the camera now, you can probably see some areas that are shiny and some areas that are not. So the areas that are shiny means the sandpaper hasn't um, hasn't affected yet, so it's not dead level. So the areas that are now looking a little bit um, like that shine's been removed, the sandpaper's actually affected that. So we're trying to get that dull appearance basically over the entire headstock without sanding through. So hence the uh, the high grip paper. doing three coats. So as I explained previously, the fine buffing oil product I've used on this EXP guitar kit is a combination of tongue oil and uh, and wax, which means we can buff the finish. So what I'm gonna do is start buffing a section on this guitar and we'll pick up video again once once I've made a bit of a difference. But when it comes to buffing, it's pretty much, um, you know, as you'd polish your car. Okay, so I've been buffing this for about 15 minutes now. I'm hoping you can start to see that slightly glossier 
front, as I said, I've done the top and not the sides. You can probably see a bit of a difference straight away there. That's basically how you buff out a wax finish. It's one of the easier finishes to apply, certainly a lot less messy and um, can be done relatively quickly. So all in all, it may not offer the same protection as a paint or something more durable, but yeah, it's a good option, especially if you're just new to this whole process. So we've just about through the finishing stage of our EXP guitar kit. The last thing we need to do is just seal this neck. You know, oils from our hands or, or you know dirt any residue on our hands can end up on our fretboard obviously so most of the time a maple fretboard like this is sealed rosewood necks uh rosewood fretboards typically are not so we're going to need to seal this what i'm going to do is just wipe on an oil it would be better to do this obviously if the frets weren't in the neck already which is why this sort of job's always normally done beforehand and just wipe directly onto that fretboard I'll come back in about 10 minutes and just wipe away any excess that hasn't absorbed into that neck. Um, may do a second coat, which will be much the same as the first. Mm -hmm. 